please remain standing for the posting of the colors and playing of the national anthem, followed by the pledge. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance until the colors have left the floor. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You may be seated. Good afternoon. I would like to welcome you to the 2020 Bolivar High School graduation. On behalf of the faculty, staff, and Board of Education, we congratulate you on your accomplishments. It's my pleasure right now to introduce to you the Board of Education for the Bolivar School District. Please stand up when I call your name, Jared Taylor. Paula Hubbard, Gerilyn Shive, J.R. Collins, Brandon Van Deeren, Treasurer, Carrie Clayton, Vice President, and Kyle Lancaster. Thank you for your dedication to this school district. Again, congratulations, class of 2021. You are a very special class to me. Um, 
I started this job four years ago when you guys started as a freshman. I had a front row seat to see all the great things that you were able to accomplish. I've built really strong relationships with many of you from the experiences of this year and from the past. You have been amazing. And I'm just so sad that you had to go through this terrible year. This has been a terrible year. The first, the first week of school was that giddy excitement that we have and we're gonna get to get back to school and get back to normal. And then we had our first positive. And then we had our second positive. And then we had our ninth positive. From that point on, we went with to 150 kids that were either positive or quarantined. In fact, just stand up if you were ever quarantined or had to go to AIM. Just stand up. Let me see who you are. That's crazy. That's crazy. And then guess what happened? You guys could sit back down. Guess what happened after that? Many of these seniors were involved with seven teams that won a district or a regional championship. 22 received a one in choir competition. 20 all-state athletes. Two, two individual state champions. Aren't they cute? Nine received a one at, in solo or ensemble in band competition. We had three runner-up state champions, girls tennis, boys basketball, and cheer. Now, hold on now, this has been a terrible year. 44 pieces of art were exhibited in art shows or competition. We had Five of these seniors competed in Dances with the Stars. We had two Dances with the Stars champions. Yeah, and I know that everybody's a little sad that we didn't get to go outside and we're not going to have to have fireworks, but I've talked uh, Mr. Lancaster into doing that same backflip off the stage at the end. No, that's really not true. <laughs> I don't think we can handle that insurance. There were 3,284 hours by you directed towards community service hours. We had one speech and debate district champion and going for a national championship in June. Go get it, boy. Eight seniors that were in BOMO Works, six JAG students that placed at national competition, three FFA national champion entomology team members, one area vice president, one gold in sports nutrition competition in FCCLA, ten seniors participated in Pro Start. Four seniors were in Centricut making over 300 signs. Eight in Centripac helping five local businesses increase profits of $130,000. 20, 25 students earned their certified nursing assistant license in health occupations. Twelve of them have accepted uh, college uh, scholarships to further their career in health health care. Six of them performed in the plays Willy Wonka and Aesop's updated fables. Nineteen completed auto tech. Now get this, get this. This has been a terrible year, remember, so uh, 109 seniors receive scholarships accumulating to almost two and a half million dollars. Just this year, 
The seniors completed 933 dual credit hours. Seven of these seniors have ACT of 29 or above. We have 16 academic All-State or All-American. This is what's special to my heart. Four of them are willing to lay down their lives for you to protect your liberty entering the military service. Thank you. And to top it all off, to top it all off, we have 187 Bolivar High School graduates today. Now sit down, sit down. We're getting a little crazy here. Let's get control of ourselves a little bit. This has not been a terrible year. This has not been a terrible year. This has been a hard year. Nobody's going to shy away from that. And I'm telling you graduates right now, every adult in this auditorium will tell you that just because it's hard doesn't make it bad. There's been a lot of disappointment that we've had to go through. And there have been, there have been a lot of times we've been disappointed. And I truly am sorry about that. The academic face face learning may not have been at the same caliber that it had been in the past. Dr. Wall might argue with me on that, and she should. But the intangibles that you have learned, grit, determination, responsibility, care for one another, being a good teammate. Folks, you have a master's degree in that learning module, and thank you for your hard work. <laughs> Students. Students that were born between 1900 and 1925, they had to go through a Great Depression. They went through World War II, the Korean War, the Vietnam War, diphtheria, polio, H1N1, H2N2. They, you know what they're known as? They were known as the greatest generation when they became adults. You've been given every opportunity to be known as the next greatest generation. I'm looking forward to seeing what you will accomplish. Four years ago, I came to this school district, and I had one simple, t one simple thing we lived by. And I'm going to leave you with those words, and hopefully you can take them into your life. Be great.
golly, this is a lot of stuff to keep track of. Okay. My name is Andrew Bunn. I was given the opportunity to be this senior class, student class president. Um, so yeah, my name is Andrew Bunn. I came to Bolivar, Missouri the summer before my eighth grade year as a tan Texas city boy with the cringiest peach fuzz above my lips I've ever seen. It was so bad. And I was immediately welcomed with open arms. The football team would eventually know me as Cactus Jack because apparently there's cactuses everywhere and everybody in Texas is named Jack. I just want to take some time to say thank you for everybody for including me and accepting me. It's meant a lot. This is my hope and prayer for everyone here, that you would realize that relationships are the single most important thing in your life. Whether you're talking about your relationship with God, your relationship with your family, friends, your teachers, your boss, Relationships, I would argue, are a must-have to be able to do this thing we call life. We need people to do life with us. Life is not a do-it-yourself project. We need people to do life with us, to encourage us when we're down, but also to keep us accountable, to keep striving to be better. There are relationships in here that started in kindergarten, started when you were born, started you know, in middle school, high school, maybe even just this past year. There's people in this gym right now that mean a lot to you guys. One thing we do a poor job in this society is letting other people know how much we appreciate them. One of my favorite moments of high school uh, was the locker room after um, our last senior football game, after the Warrensburg game. It was our last game to play together. It was, I still feel, it's, it's an awful feeling that we lost, and I still wish we could go back um, and play him one more time. But in that locker room, we were given the opportunity to cry, an opportunity to mourn, but also, most importantly, we got an opportunity to honor one another. We were able to get closure. No matter how much it hurt from that loss, we got closure. We were able to say how much we loved each other and how much we enjoyed going to war together as a team. There are people here today that loved you and have been an outright amazing friend to you. But also know you have people who you were once friends with, but something happened that affect that relationship. I challenge you with this. You're thinking of somebody right now. After this, go thank them. It's okay to cry. It's okay to mourn. It's okay to get that little ooey gooey sensation. But you need to go fix that relationship. Tell your best friend of 10 years all they mean to you. Tell stories from intermediate school. Laugh. Reflect. Embarrass one another. Tell some inside jokes, but be in this moment right now. Don't let your mind think about your graduation party or college or trying to find another shift for work. Be in this moment. Give lots of hugs. Leave nothing, leave nothing on the field. We talk about in football give, leaving nothing on the field. Make, making sure you give your absolute best on every play. Max effort. Senior class of 2021. Don't leave anything out on the field. Don't rush out immediately after this to go get something to eat. You don't know if you're going to get another opportunity to express your gratitude to that one person. You've heard the saying, finish strong. Most of the time, it's your teachers bugging you to turn your work in. Well, I say finish strong with your relationships. I wish you all luck in this next season of, lives, of your lives, and I hope you guys know I love you. Thanks. Great job, Andrew. Let me get my tassel out of the way. Standing and addressing my peers at graduation is something I would have never considered four years ago as a freshman. I was uninspired, reserved, and unwilling to face the challenges that life beyond high school would hold for me. Those feelings I just described are more than likely a universal experience for everyone sitting in front of me today. But it will never feel that way. After all, High school isn't a one size fits high school isn't a one size fits all for everyone. Sorry, Darren Fugus distracting me in the audience. <laughs> it's an organic experience filled with unique challenges and lessons. Now, the lessons that I have learned here have largely originated from this place and have been taught by the staff and the people surrounding me and my peers. For that reason, I'd like to take a moment to thank those people that have sacrificed so much to get us to where we are today, in spite of unprecedented challenges. First, I'd like to honor the people who directly played a role in our graduation, the teachers. 
You brought lessons of life, such as the question-driven discussions in Mr. Lugosh's college comp class. People like Ms. Reichert, Coach Rothdiner, and Mrs. Cox showed humor and humility, much the same as any good friend would. In the case of Coach Hoig's class, you brought the juice. Coach Hoig over there, he can rest knowing none of us here are forgetting our juice today. In Bolivar's case, any teacher could replace any of those names I just listed. Each and every one exemplifies great qualities, and we are truly grateful for every single teacher's part in our success. Next, the staff and administration. Now, before I continue, I have to acknowledge the fact that my own mother is a member of this group. And because of that, I can confidently say that these people working behind the scenes truly put forth a great effort to make known that you have not cleaned your room yet. <laughs> and your bathroom. Your bathroom looks like you could use it, too. Without you, we wouldn't get an infinite supply of dad jokes or someone to tell the underclassmen to take the elevator to the non-existent second floor. Dr. Guerin and Mr. Owens. All jokes aside, we appreciate all of your hard work and patience during a time where we had to come up with solutions on the fly. I'd also like to individually thank Dr. Barry for his commitment to make Bolivar the best it could be during his tenure. You were thrown so many unknowns, so many uncertainties, and you hit it with stride and you really gave us the best experience that was possible in your time here. So we want to thank you. Lastly, I want to thank the parents and the families that surround us today. While we may have had countless arguments and disagreements, they are long overshadowed by the love and support that you showed continually as we struggled to figure things out. Thank you all for sticking with us through the end. Now before I go on, can we get a round of applause for everyone that I just mentioned? Now that our biggest supporters have been recognized, it's time to celebrate our accomplishment. We did it. The cliche statement of the journey has just begun is something I want to avoid in this speech, but quite frankly, I can't think of anything else to say. After all, we conquered high school in a time of loneliness, isolation, and social upheaval. That sounds super depressing, but that's not to say we won't miss any of it. Moments like Connor Stambolgev, jamming karaoke to the Imagine Dragons' greatest hits, or Logan Rowley smashing the punching machine at Andy B's with his head will bring back memories of laughter and joy that we desperately needed on a senior trip. Moments like Drayton Hutchman scoring a long touchdown off of a fumble as a lineman, or witnessing Lexi Berry drop 34 points in a hard-fought battle in the district championship game, not even to mention the first state title in tennis with her duo with Megan Roberts. Or what about the feeling of the roar of the student section as we watch Jace Kruger, Bo Banner, Luke Mintz, and company battle for the state championship in JQH Arena? Or the utter satisfaction we felt when we finished a junior year that had been ridden with Zoom calls and late assignments? And for some of us, the late assignments never stopped coming. That goes without mentioning all of the other countless achievements that our other seniors sitting here have accomplished in their four years. All of these moments will bring back memories of triumph in a time that we were all proud to be liberators. Calling these experiences anything less than a journey would be a disservice to all of us. Now, our futures hold a mirror of unknowns, but I can't think of better prepared to face the mysteries that life will better than the class of 2021. That may seem like a hasty generalization, but after everything is said and done, we are truly only limited by ourselves. As you leave here today and prepare for your next step into the real world, I ask all of you to bring with you the traits of patience and compassion that I'm certain is ingrained within each and every one of you. Enjoy this moment. Don't regret anything about your experience, but instead use the lessons you learn to fuel the positive change you want to see in the world. I look forward to witnessing all of your hard work come into fruition and the successes that result. Thank you all for 13 years of laughs, lessons, and more than a fair share of dance battles in the parking lot. Thank you, uh, Andrew. Thank you, Jacob. We appreciate your leadership so much and your words today that uh, were so fitting for this time. And I'm going to take a, something from Andrew and just start off 
uh, by telling you guys how proud I am of you. You guys have been awesome. You have gone through a lot, but you've gone through it with perseverance and dignity and just, you've been great. And relationships, the way you support each other, it's been really, really impressive. Uh, and I know that, um, you know, I'll, I'll say that on behalf of the faculty and staff too, because I know the people here, we do our jobs with love because we do care guys. And we want to see you be so successful in whatever you do. Make, help you make your uh, dreams come to, true. Be a small part of your uh, journey and your, this chapter that you're in. You're moving on to the next chapter. That's really exciting. So I love you guys, and I'm proud of you, and you've made it to this point, which is awesome. I wanted to share a quick story uh, today that I thought was fitting and kind of inspiring uh, graduation story. But it's from the Olympics in Barcelona. And Derek Redmond, uh, he was a 400-meter sprinter. Uh, he ran in the 400-meter dash. I don't really think that should be a dash. Uh, that's too long of a distance, I think, to actually sprint. Uh, but some people attempt that. I usually just try to sprint from my couch to my refrigerator. That's about it. But Derek Redmond was an elite sprinter. And he had prepared his whole life for this moment. Years and years of aiming for excellence. I know you guys hear that quite a bit around here. And when the starting pistol fired and he blasted out of the blocks, ready to run the perfect race of his life, perfect stride, perfect form, everything was great for the first 100 meters. And then it happened. He heard a loud pop and felt a stabbing pain. His leg went out from under him and he crumbled to the surface of the track. He had blown a hamstring. For those of you who are in athletics, you know that is not a good injury to have. He was finished. His dreams were ended, you would think. But that's not how Derek Redmond saw it. That's not how he responded. He didn't act like the race was over for him. You see, he got back up and he started to run as best he could, dragging his busted leg along behind him. He was determined to finish the race. He later said, in reflecting on that, he said, that's my definition of excellence. It's when you get knocked down in life, but no matter how hard it is, you still find a way to get back up. The crowd there in Barcelona, they began to cheer for him. They got behind him as he was coming around uh, the way there. But little did they know what was about to happen next. Just seconds after his leg went out, as he began trying to work his way to the finish, another person came sprinting onto the track right behind Derek. This mysterious person quickly caught up with him and started running right alongside Derek. He put his arm around Derek and Derek around him as they continued together all the way to the finish line. Some of your parents may remember this uh, from the Olympics uh, in Barcelona. Together they crossed the finish line, both of these men embracing, tears streaming down their face. And Derek's father had been there to cross the finish line with him. His dad had come out of the stands, and after he had blown out his uh, hamstring, had ran with him. So Derek didn't win the race, obviously, but he did demonstrate ec excellence in that he never gave up. And his father, coming to his side, showed his love and support and encouragement um, in that moment as well. So what a moment of inspiration and hope that is. All of us have people that come alongside us and help us. All of us get knocked down and we have the opportunities to get back up. Today, Dr. Barry highlighted all the amazing accomplishments from this class, unbelievable uh, success that we've had. Well done, I want you to hear that from me, well done. But excellence also isn't always winning or being the best or meeting a certain standard, it isn't always having things turn out exactly like you would like. Sometimes it's overcoming those obstacles and those difficulties that come along the way. And you all have done that. You've shown your excellence 
throughout your high school career, and especially in the hardships that we've had this year and at the end of last year. And ultimately, that's really what school and learning is about. I think it's aiming for excellence. It's always striving to learn, grow, and change. So when you get out of school, you're not done being a learner. None of us are. We have the opportunity to learn for the rest of our lives and to also make contributions and to show and live our excellence to others who are around us. So I just want to point out a few things I've noticed um, that maybe were either behind the scenes or um, that I just thought they, they stood out to me. They were things that I've noticed about some of you. Uh, there was a student in this class that at times would reach out to kids at lunch who didn't have anybody to sit with, and he would sit with them and talk to them. That's living your excellence. One student in this group would say thank you to her teachers almost after every class. And it was, it was from the heart. It's from the heart. That's living your excellence. One student in this group, I was part of a conversation. They had a very hard, difficult conversation, but ex had incredible maturity, almost beyond their years, and understanding of the difficulty of that situation. One student set a goal at the beginning of a year to be a friend to someone new who might need a friend. I heard about that. One student was here early pretty much every day of high school to open the front doors and greet you with a smile. That's living your excellence. Blake Alverson. Every day, folks. And then there are many other examples um, and many that went unseen. Um, those might be some of the best ones, things maybe that we didn't even see or know about, but how you helped each other, you took care of each other, and you made this a better place. Like you guys made us a better, you made this a better place to be because you were here. So I want to congratulate some of you for your academic uh, commitment and excellence in this next part. Um, but just like with the things Dr. Barry said and with these academic accomplishments, those are kind of your successes. But your excellence, I believe, is like the process of how you get there. So you don't always get success, even though maybe you're living with excellence. But you can always choose to, to make that, make excellence a choice in, in your life. So we have um, students here who have received graduation honors because of the dedication and the diligence that they've shown throughout high school. They wear a medallion. Their names are in the program also for you to see as well. And so we're going to recognize them at this time and have them uh, stand up in each group so we can um, applaud them. So we'll start um, with the students who earned cum laude. These students earned a 3.67 to 3.84 GPA. Please stand at this time so you can be recognized. Great job. The next group is magna cum laude. And this, uh, these students achieved a 3.85 to a 3.9 GPA. Congratulations to our magna cum laude students. Stand. And finally, we have a large group of students who've earned summa cum laude honors, and that's 4.0 or higher. Uh, congratulations to you on that gold medal. Uh, it's also fitting to uh, acknowledge that uh, the National Honor Society members today are wearing a stole signifying the four pillars of NHS. Excellence in scholarship, leadership, service, and character. Um, as Dr. Barry mentioned, uh, the graduates are pushing $2.5 million in scholarship. So great job on that as well. Great job, everybody. At this time, I would like to introduce to you
Board President Kyle Lancaster to certify the graduates. On behalf of the Board of Education for the Bolivar R1 School District, we would like to congratulate the graduates. You have had a senior year like none other. The past year, you have had to change and adapt continuously to an ever-changing world and school year. I think it's safe to say, one way or another, you have faced adversity this year. Just this past week, I read a quote, there is no education like adversity. My hope for each of you is that through the challenging times this past year, you've learned something about yourself. The future is certain that there will be great times and challenging times. Today is a great time for each of you. So I hope you realize overcoming the adversity was worth it. Now, on behalf of the school board, it is my to officially certify each of the graduates today. They have met the requirements and fulfilled the obligations necessary to earn the Bolivar High School Diploma. Congratulations. Will the class of 2021 please rise? Mr. Lancaster and members of the Board of R1, uh, Bolivar R1 Board of Education, on behalf of Dr. Wall, Dr. Guerin, myself, and the entire Bolivar School District, it is my honor to present to you the 135th graduating class of Bolivar High School. They have met the requirements of the Bolivar R1 School District and the Missouri Department of Elementary and Secondary Education. Congratulations. If the you, first row, please remain standing, and the rest, please be seated. Please bear with us. We have a bit of an emergency we need to be handling right now.
I know that everybody is concerned, and I do believe that uh, this is under control. An ambulance is being called, but it appears that everything is okay. We are going to move forward with the presentations. Hunter James Davis. Shaley Ann Goodman. Jacob K. Darby. Boaz Austin Banner. Andrew T. Bunn. Dalton Fox. Stella Marie Banky. Megan Elizabeth Austin. Cora Marie Stimson. Abigail J. John. Alexis Hope Berry. Kara B. Laramore. Megan Hope Roberts. Riley Wayne Labee. Parker Christian Erickson. Luke D. Mintz. Dylan Charles Hall. Ryan Joseph Haydank. Blake Matthew Halverson. McKendry Brooke Bebo. Gage Christopher Foster. Mia Emily Payne. Emmy Reese Hall. David Tackett. Emily Ann Bandy. Ethan J. Billingsley. Brett Pollock. Jackson Brady Vestal. Alexander James Knight. Trevor Lee Nelson. Caitlin Rose Brooks.
Jenna Marie Jones. J. Sawyer Adams. Seth A. Childers. Darren Fugit. Drayton Hutchteman. Jackson Paul Roten. Heath Allen James Robertson. Jacob Anderson. Raiden Romang. Canyon Chase Cunningham. Jace M. Kruger. Kruger. <laughs> Paige Alexis Price. Lily Nicole Grant. Hannah Joy Goffner. Riley Spencer Harden. Mason William Rogers. Emily Sue Sokolik. Justin Lee Vance. Ashton Lee Trotter. Blake Wayne Campbell. Whitney Elizabeth Ebricht. Anson W. Pulsifer. Aliyah Mercedes Salyer. Lacey Varner. Jacob Natal. Savannah Lee Neal. Delilah Lynn Sheldon. Bailey Renee Beckman. Adele Daughtery. Emma Rose Stewart. Marina June Pomeroy. Hannah Marie Shepherdly. Leah Mackenzie Dukes. Madison Page Griffith. Lisbeth Maldonado. Valerie Migranis. Rachel Haley Renfro. Chloe 
Isabel Duran. Andrea Lynn Bardot. Hannah Faith Presley. Emmy Grace Presley. Colton Rainey. Quade M. Smith. Nadine Palafox. Jesse Munson. Mackenzie Rose Frank. Alexa Valentina Schmidt. Joseph Iskandar. Michael Crawford. Gavin Allen Blaine. Trey George. Frank A. Gregor Jr. Seth Austin Kirby. Benjamin Horch. Jackson Riley Woods. Michael Deason. Peyton Scott Butler. Landon David Brewer. Josiah M. Barges. Aliona Nicholas. Draven Sharp. Isaac Robert Jenkins. Crystal L. Core. Jordan Daniel West. Jacob Hale. Destiny Christine Dodd. Connor M. Stambolgif. Emma M. Kirkland. Trinity Clarice Williamson. Zachary A. Hare. Luke Spencer Sergeant. Carissa Rickman. Landon Ross Rausch. Skyler T. Arnold.
Trinity Lynn Guffey. Brianna Shiree McLone. Caden Cole Eisenberger. Seth R. Marshall. Caleb A. Welch. Zachary Dillon LaFrance. Chelsea Ray McDonald. Dylan Lee Walker. Dylan Douglas Phillips. Michael R. Murphy. Logan Z. Rowley. Danny Brooke Smith. Dalton Hunter Price. Alexandria Wells. Christopher J. DuBose. Faith Rubian Genovese. Ariana Jolie Bradley. Emily Grace Louise Hogan. Taylor Janae Northern. Luciano A. Astone. Emery W. Smashy. Eliana Alice Nunez. Alexandra Lynn Beth Honey. Helen M. Aug. Ashton Hope Lynn. Hallie Elizabeth Tucker. Emma Catherine Turner. Lauren Danielle Harrell. Claire Green. Dylan Ashlock. Curtis Kuhn. Harley B. Minx. Sierra G. Sexton. Selena Marie Olivas. Malisha Joanne Johnson.
Paige Marie Higginbotham. Faithlin Autumn Oker. Janelle L. Bullard. Noemi Moreno. Skyla Cheyenne Fisher. Gavin Neesmith. Carl E. Seeley. Jared D. Varner. Jeremy Shalvey. George R. Wilson. Jerrica Elizabeth Fast. Andrew Woodard. Hunter Bailey. Jacob M. Carr. Joshua Gibbs. Tristan Long. Kendall Ray Melvin. Natalie G. Red Kreitz. Reese Moore. Yeah. Nathan Matthew Young. Cameron Holcomb. William S. Denning. Callie Jo Beth Barber. Ariel Janae Morgan. David Michael Alexander. Whitney Clemens. Amber Rose Morgan Brown. Eric Daniel Rehm. Valeria Rivero. Anna Camille Buckmaster. Samuel C. Collins. Zachary Chase Milam. Chantel Mackenzie Thurmond. Ashley Dawn Madison Brown. And those are the graduates of the class of 2021.
I almost forgot what to do next. All right, will our graduates please rise and remain standing for the school song. The turning of the tassel is a time-honored tradition to signify the transition from student and candidate to graduate. The tassel is placed on the right side by the candidate, but is displayed on the left by the graduate. The graduate wears the tassel proudly to the left over your hearts to signify the fond memories and years of learning at Bolivar High School. Class of 2021, please turn your tassels at this time. You are to be commended for your dedication. We confirm by the turning of the tassel that you're truly liberators for life. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the Bolivar High School Class of 2021. Congratulations. <laughs> Graduates and all else, everyone else can rise for the singing of the school song, led by choir members Jack Vestal, Trey George, Eliana Nunez, Lacey Varner. At the conclusion, this is the moment they've all been waiting for, at the conclusion of the school song, graduates toss those caps in the air. You made it. Toss them, throw them high. Bring the juice. Come on. so much. 